a secret maybe but for some weird reason my village people were just doing meeting on my head all those people that want to stop me from reaching the promised land Ooh, that guy is hot Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nene Falorinshaw. If you are new here, I welcome you. Welcome to the family. So before we continue, please click the subscribe button, click the like button, and let's enjoy this journey together. Now, to the video. So I asked a few questions on Instagram. I asked people to ask me questions on Instagram. And I was pleasantly surprised because I had some really interesting questions. Now the plan was for me to do this video when I had like maybe a hundred subscribers, but then I'm like, why wait? I mean, like why? I'm going to be ask, answering these questions in no particular order, just randomly. But I think um, first and foremost, I need to introduce myself. So like I said, my name is Nene Folorunsho. I am a Nigerian. I started my YouTube channel in November 2018. I grew up in Port Harcourt. It is in the southern part of Nigeria. Um, I live in Minnesota, America. And I am married and I have a very, very active two-year-old. Now, if you have a toddler, I am sure you can relate. Okay, one of the questions I got was what inspired you to start your YouTube channel? It was to start in 2014. I had started writing content for my channel. I had started researching and doing all that stuff. But for some weird reason, my village people were just doing meeting on my head. Like, I couldn't just do it. Anyways, fast forward to 2018, I was like, today is the day. All those people that want to stop me from reaching the promised land. It is over for you. So in 2018, November, I started this channel. And basically, I, I started it because I want to lend my voice to courses I'm passionate about. I want to be able to inspire people. And then I also like to share business strategies because I was in the business environment. I ran a business in Nigeria and it was hard. I faced a lot of situations where if I had some sort of mentor or if I had um, some sort of guidance, I would have been um, able to navigate better and handle my business better. So this channel, I just decided it's make business easier for people, especially small businesses. And I want to simplify cooking for as many people as I can. Was it love at first sight for you and your husband? Hmm. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Love, what's that? Love at first what? No. First of all, I do not believe there's anything called love at first sight. Now, that's my opinion. And that's because I have this very big grand serious definition of love i believe that love is patient it is selfless love for me love takes time love grows i cannot see someone at first sight and feel all this kind of emotions for the person i can be attracted and be like "Ooh, that guy is hot yes i believe in attraction at first sight but love at first sight uh -uh. i don't think that's possible at least it wasn't for me it wasn't in our case, especially because we were friends and we had been talking for a while before we started dating. So it wasn't love at first sight for us. Next question is, what do you call your fashion style? Really? Really? Did you really ask me this question? <laughs> like me, fashion style. Like what fashion sense do I have? Like, have you followed me on Instagram? Follow me on Instagram. My handle is on the screen right now. But have you followed me on Instagram? Have you seen me in person? Like, I do not have any fashion sense. Like, I'm pretty basic. Okay. My fashion style is comfortable. I need to breathe properly. I need to be extremely comfortable. I do not want to... Like, my fashion style is comfort. Like, extremely comfortable. And when I mean comfortable is sneakers, flats, sweats. Yes, that's how comfortable I get. Like, I do not even know how to wear heels. When I wear heels, I look like a frozen turkey trying to walk. Like, no. 
Okay, next question. What do you miss about Nigeria? And I'm going to be adding two questions. I'm going to put two questions together. This one says, what do you miss about Nigeria? And then the other one says, how do you cope being so far away from your family and friends? Okay, what do I miss about Nigeria? I miss the food. Like, I miss eating abacha. I miss isiwu. I miss just sitting at a car wash and just digesting in Kwabi with a bottle of something light. Like, I just miss that life. I miss the groove. I miss jamming to Nigerian music in the club. I miss um, my friends. I do not make friends easily. So I'm already used to my circle of friends in Nigeria. Moving here, it's been hard for me to make friends. So I kind of miss what I'm already used to. And then how I cope away from family and friends. I um, schooled in a different state. So I schooled in Benin. And then I went to law school. So I had my degree in Benin. And then I went to law school in Enugu. And then after that, after a while, I moved to Lagos, away from my family. So I'm used to not always being at home. And I'm not a very clingy person. Like, I'm not clingy. I'm not that... You know, I, I kind of... I know how to cope when I'm away from the people that I love. I try to keep in touch with them. I call them. I mean, I'm on WhatsApp with my mom like every day. I am chatting with my best friends and I try to keep up communication as much as I can. So it doesn't really feel like I'm away from them. Yes, I know that physical presence has is very, very important, but I cope. I think I'm doing pretty well. I think I'm doing pretty well. For me, it's not so hard because I am not a very attached person. Yeah. What is your take on boys learning how to cook? I think cooking should not be gender specific. I think everybody should know how to cook. Like I feel cooking is a survival skill. Like if you're going to eat, then you should know how to cook. Like, to be independent, you should know how to cook. I mean, there are times where you're going to be in situations where you just need to whip up a good meal for yourself. And that's one of the reasons I started this channel to simplify meals as much as possible and make people just cook and create decent meals for themselves without the stress of, you know, making it all grand and stuff like that. So for me, I think it's important that everybody should know how to cook. If you're sending your girl to the kitchen to cook, then you should send your son to cook alongside. Like it shouldn't be a girl thing. Everyone should know how to cook. If you want chop, cook what about your baby gives you joy ah. so i have a two-year-old she's tommy lola and um she's really active seeing the progress that she makes every day like i mean every day like you wake up in the morning and she's doing something new i mean so that kind of that warms my heart it just makes me feel like she's really doing good and yeah, that gives me a lot of joy. I've been meaning to ask you, you snapped back real quick after your pregnancy. What did you do? So this person is basically asking what I did um, to lose the weight, the baby weight. Um, I didn't do anything. And I'm not saying that to sound like, oh, I have a good body. Mm -mm. I was sick all through my pregnancy. Like for the whole nine months, I was sick. I threw up for nine months. I'm not joking. Like I threw up until two days before I had I, I I gave birth two days before I gave birth I was still throwing up like I threw up for nine months I lost 20 pounds in my pregnancy um within the first six months and then I added about eight pounds and then when I gave birth to the baby I dropped the weight I dropped 20 pounds again so it was I was sick like I was sick after I had um after I gave birth I I was eating, but I wasn't doing really great with food and all that. But like months after, like maybe seven months after I gave birth, my appetite came back and I started putting on some weight. But initially, after I had um, gave birth, I it wasn't like I added weight when I was pregnant. I lost weight. So it looked like, oh, snap back game is on point, is on flick. Mm -mm. I was sick. I was sick. My pregnancy... <sighs> That one is a different story. Question was very important. I answered it on Instagram, but I'm going to share it here. It says, what steps do you take to achieve your goals? 
for me it's um, one of the things i try to do is i try not to procrastinate i think it's very important that i do it right away like if i think it i do it because this youtube thing has taught me a lesson i thought of doing youtube for four years procrastination i procrastinated for four years so for me it's important that if i think it i do it another thing is um i try to be very clear for me clarity is important i try to outline my goals what is it i'm trying to achieve and then i start tackling them one by one and then not to get overwhelmed i break them into bits so i'm taking a step to start a youtube channel what do i need to start the youtube channel i break it down i need to shoot a video i need to edit i need to put it up on youtube i don't break down shooting a video what do i need to shoot a video what equipment do i need what kind of personality do i want to portray what kind of those kind of things i break them down and i start taking them one by one because I get overwhelmed when I work under intense pressure and when I have so much for me to do. So when I break it down, it's easier for me to achieve. Something that a few people know about me is this drum roll. <laughs> I actually founded a dance crew, like a dance, like a break dance, not a break dance crew. I founded a dance group when I was in Benin. I was in college and it wasn't on campus it was outside campus and i attended this church in benin and <laughs> i just thought they needed a dance group i went to meet one of the pastors and i told him i was like oh then you start the dance group i'm like i i'm just really basic when it comes to dancing like have you seen my shackle like i don't even that i don't know how to dance shackle like i am i am just not great with dancing and this was in 2004 Five. yeah and then there was a dance instructor that um was attending the church and he was talking about starting a dance group as well so the pastor told both of us to meet each other and both of us started the dance group so he did the dance um routine sort of the steps and all and then i did the administrative work so yes i founded the dance group in benin and i am pretty sure that that dance group is still existing and they do not know who i am and I'm not about to say the name of the dance group because they'll be like, this one started this dance group. Okay. I'm not ready for anybody to argue with me. So yes, I started a dance group in 2005 in Benin City. And the dance group is still existing. I think so. Oh, when? Is the dance group still existing? <laughs> Anyways, that comes to the end of my video today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share this video and subscribe to my channel. Let's continue this just in the comment section. Leave your name. Tell me where you're from. And if you can answer a few of the questions I answered, please answer them in the comment section. I want us to get to know each other better and continue this journey together. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in my next video. Until then, bye.